The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. Presented by Chevy Silverado, the official truck of the outdoors. Hi, I'm Jeff Hammond, and this week I'm headed to Wyoming for a spot and stalk archery hunt. And thanks to my buddy at Realtree, Bill Jordan, for the opportunity. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Jordan. For the ones who know me, you know that I live for the outdoors. But what you may not know, that I'm a big fan of the sport of NASCAR. The fans, the pits, the cars. It's intense, lightning fast pace in every sense of the word. Here on Realtree's NASCAR Outdoors, I have the chance to take these drivers and personalities out here in my world. And let me tell you, you'll see a whole different side from the one at the track. This week, NASCAR sport analyst Jeff Hammond is in Wyoming at the Wagon Hound Ranch for his pursuit of a trophy elk. <laughs> Battling luck and a couple of missed opportunities, Jeff and his guide Dax have already had several bull elk encounters within archery range. And while all the hard work has so far resulted in frustration, the lure of hunting is the discovery of the wild unknown, never giving up hope. Had some tough, tough luck and some frustrating days, and and he's just hung right in there and kept a good attitude and. and uh, you know, as guides, when it's slow and rough like that, we kind of, kind of try to encourage our hunters and tell them it's it's bound to pick up and something will work out. And so we're all going to get up there and hunt hard and and uh, hope somebody comes away with a nice bull. If they're close, just find the nearest bush, tree, rock, blade of grass, and get ready. You may, if you're in the open, you just try to draw when they're not looking. If something runs by you with an arrow in it, put another one in it. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. Whack them and stack them. And uh, we'll try to get set up, see if the bull will pull. What do you think? I mean, and then matter, I'll... We'll get let, a fight behind you. Yeah. We'll just get them fired up. Be careful. Yeah. I mean, these things aren't guns. Yeah. yeah. But they still can get you in trouble. So. Sure. Make, make sure you target and kind of make sure everybody's safe. Yeah, we don't want to chase all around the day. Well, Dax, you know, Dax McCarty, my guide, you know, he'd been doing a lot of scouting and he knew there was elk down in here. He said there were some good bulls and a lot of young bulls. So he really felt like that if we could get off in here, we would get ourselves right into a hotbed of bulls and we'd get them screaming. Well, the one thing I've learned about Dax is when he says something, it usually happens. So when he said we we're gonna see some bulls, I was pretty confident we were. I knew time was running out, but I believed in my man and he didn't steer me wrong. The best thing about this whole deal was as we were going in, Dax said, now get ready, get ready. So man, I got an ear, knock, ear knocked real quick and, and I knew that when he said get set up, get out in front of a tree or wherever it was gonna do, it was gonna happen in a hurry. And man, it did. Now Dax said, get in there and boys, now get set up, get set up right here. You sit here, you sit here. And all of a sudden he went back across the ridge behind us. And man, it was like snap your fingers. He blew one time and all of a sudden there were bulls coming out of everywhere. Got a lot of bugling going on right around here. I mean, this morning they're fired up. We gotta get ready. I've never seen anything like this. And you talking about the adrenaline coming up? Man, I was getting ready. But the cool thing was we could hear the big boys bugling down in the valley and we knew they were coming in right behind the young guys. Staring down his sights of the mature bull elk and rut, we'll see how Hammond handles the most thrilling encounter in his life. Next on Realtree's NASCAR Outdoors.
Real Trees NASCAR Outdoors is brought to you by the 2012 Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, long-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. By Russell Outdoors, explore your limits. By Primos, speak the language. By Thompson Center's new dimension bolt action platform. By New Holland, the official tractor of Team Realtree. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by Bill Jordan's Realtree, family, friends, and the outdoors. It's the peak of the rut at Wyoming's Wagon Hound Ranch, and Jeff Hammond finds himself in a perfect position for a shot at a mature bull. But after several close encounters, could the action get any hotter? Got a lot of bugling going on right around here. I mean, this morning they are fired up. We got to get ready. And there was bulls all around us. It weren't the right one. It wasn't the one I was looking for. But I knew if I just could stand still and be patient, the way Dax was working them, I knew that big guy was going to be coming in behind him. And the hope was there were going to be more than just one shooter bull. And man, I was not disappointed when it did happen. Man, there were bulls to the right of us. There were bulls to the left of us. They were all young, couldn't shoot them. But what happened next? Let me tell you, I wasn't ready for it. I got freight trained. I've never been looking down a barrel of big old six by six ever in my life like that. He, he came by me so close I could reach out and touch him. I was shaking like a leaf, man. I tried to get a shot off. I, I'm pretty sure I missed him, but man, you talking about close. I have stared down a 3,500 pound race car, literally. But this took the cake, folks. I mean, I was shaking like a leaf on a tree. <laughs> I've seen a lot of activity out elk hunting, but that's that's gonna be hard to call. You know, I've always heard the guy say, "Hey, look, just get ready. I'm gonna put him in your back pocket." Well, I'll be a son of a gun, bud. You just about <laughs> did. <laughs> Too close for comfort. Yeah. We all know how difficult hunting elk is with a bow, and Jeff Hammond had one of the most amazing hunts that I've ever seen. You know, that hunt with Bobby Labonte, NASCAR legend, and merchandise manager Chris Williams. Those hunts will stay with them for a long time. Now they have a second back, opportunity back to go back during the rifle season. Now let's see what happens. The weather has turned much colder and the bulls are in post-rut pattern, but the ranch conservation practice remain true to a healthy strategy. Well, you know, we're looking for older bulls, mature bulls. We, we kind of like to let our young bulls walk, um, you know, and grow, and, and especially those bulls with good genetics, you know, so, we're looking for four and a half or older bulls, probably, you know, six and a half and in their prime. And, and uh, 320 class of bulls, you know, realistic, I think, to hold out for. And uh, you're going to see a lot of 300 class bulls around the ranch and, and a lot of young bulls. We've called in a lot of young bulls, and that's, that's fairly typical archery hunting is those, those young bulls are kind of, they don't have their cows or they're getting kicked out of herds. And so they're, they're looking around and coming in with the calls a little bit more. So. You know, you typically have encounters uh, when you're trying to call elk in with younger bulls, but we've seen some big bulls, and, and there's there's a pretty high bull to cow ratio, so competition's tough, and and that's I think why you do see some of the older bulls coming into calls on, on this ranch because of the, the the number of elk we have and the number of bulls. When it comes to hunting, a lot of times you don't get a second chance. 
Yeah, I was here at Wagon Hound earlier this year during bow season and uh, had a lot of encounters, a lot of opportunities, and uh, we're able to put a, put a period on it and get a bull down. So fortunately for me, I had an opportunity to come back here and uh, get started as far as a rifle hunt's concerned. And man, I was excited to get back and try to redeem myself. Well, we're back here at, at Wagon Hound for the second trip. The wind is howling and uh, got a little snow on the ground. But we're seeing a lot of bulls that just kind of get in the right position and uh, trying to be a little bit patient. And buddy, I'm telling you right now, the wind chill factor here is, uh, is pretty tough. We made a heck of a climb to get to the top of this ridge. Now I'm trying to catch my breath, but the problem is, all of a sudden we got a low cloud kind of come over top of this mountain. Can't see real good, so I'm gonna try to wait it out. Plus, give me a chance to kind of steady my nerves. I Man, that was a hard climb. Not used to this altitude. Feel real confident though. Day two, we're buying today. We're buying. Jeff Hammond served in the crew for three championship seasons between Kale Yarber and Darrell Waldrop. In 1982, Hammond was promoted to the crew chief position at Junior Johnson Motorsports for Waldrop, and Waldrop won his second consecutive championship. Hammond and Waldrop became one of the top driver crew chief combinations in NASCAR, winning 43 races during the 80s, including the 1985 Cup Championship. Today, Jeff continues to provide insight from his years of experience as a television broadcast analyst for the sport of NASCAR. After what happened during archery season, you know, we knew we were running out of time and we were in our second day at late in the afternoon. And I was getting a little bit frustrated. We glassed a lot of, you know, good herds and, you know, I found several bulls that I would have been really happy with. But Dak's trying to be uh, the perfectionist he is and give me the best opportunity on one of the better bulls here on the ranch. We we uh, he kept saying, hey, just be a little patient. We'll find the one we're looking for. But in the, the meantime, we were able to see four other bulls on an adjacent ridge and we really liked two of them. I said we go down here and go back up there. I think about coming out on top of them, on that side or two above them. Well, yeah, the only thing is, if those lay, we might not have a shot, and then we'll have a pretty long shot over there to where, you know, it'd be, yeah, it's hard to say, I don't know, the, if we come up underneath them. Okay. On those rocks. Talk about, let's stay in that, that valley right yeah. there and come up with the- As long as we stay out of sight of those two. Yeah. Do about like use that rock face right there in front yeah. of them, kind of mm -hmm. use that to get up on them or get to it. If we get to there, top of those rocks right there, you'd be, what, maybe 200, 250? Yeah, it wouldn't be bad. We had a plan. Okay. We knew we had to get up on top of this ridge, and we were able to accomplish that. As we started down the ridge, we were able to slip right into the area that we knew the bulls had been laying earlier. They weren't there. We really didn't expect them to be there, but we were kind of hoping. Did they jump up and move when we spooked these bulls over there? Already moving? No, I don't know. I, I don't know where the two little ones went, but yeah. I don't know where these guys went either. That's all kind of went down there. And the further we went down the ridge, we started seeing signs of them. You know, from the tracks in the snow, we finally got in close enough we could even smell them. I can smell them. Yeah. I think they're probably gonna be feeding down here. We'll just keep close to this edge and look off there. Just keep an eye out in front of us. Braving the elements and the rugged Wyoming terrain, Jeff and his guide Dak seem to have found themselves back on the brink of conquest. But they've been there before. Will a rare second chance be enough? Coming up on Real Trees NASCAR Outdoors. With a streak that began in 1981, Darrell Waltrip, after leading for 205 laps, won his seventh straight race at Bristol in 1984. And the checkered flag waves, Darrell Waltrip has won the Bud 500 at Bristol. Waltrip's streak tied Richard Petty for the most consecutive victories at one NASCAR track. From his role from pit crew chief to the broadcast lights of NASCAR, Jeff Hammond has had an awesome and great career. But when the glare of TV life gets a bit much, Hammond retreats to his ranch in the hills of North Carolina, a world away from the roar of the crowd where his true passion resides. 
to me, it's a cool way of life. It's, it's a nice diversion. And to be yeah. connected and be outside like, the, like I am, uh, I'm happy. I like the outdoors. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why, you know, the farming, uh, the rodeo, they all tie into the hunting and, and being out here because there's so much that's so beautiful about just being outside. Walk on your feet a little bit here. Yeah, pull the shoes off right there before you mess up everything. Probably the biggest thing here on the farm I'm so proud of has got to be my horse. Hey, are you getting fat, buddy? I'll get you back out there and start working you more. I enjoy being on horseback, whether it's in the rodeo arena, competing, or if it's trail riding, or if it's just working with them. I mean, taking care of their needs. I mean, they're big old animals, but they got a, they got a big heart. They're, they're smarter than a lot of people give them credit for. And when you connect with them, I think it's a unique connection. I guess they wouldn't have a lot easier, huh? Come on, see, follow me around here, come on. I'm always used to hearing about people talk about horsepower. Let me tell you right now, when you get on a good horse, that's horsepower. When you get one that can run, it can cut, it can stop, that's performance. And that's something you can't build into a race car in Fort Keep your head up. I think horses are just some, some of the most awesome animals that God ever put on earth. Yeah, that's what I want you to do right there. That's a good boy. Back at Wyoming's Wagon Hound Ranch, Jeff and his guide Dax have worked their way into position to make a stalk on a mature bull. It's down to the wire, so they must make the most of their final pursuit. I can smell them. Yeah. I think they're probably going to be feeding down here. We'll just keep close to this edge. We can look off there. Just keep an eye out in front of us. So far, exactly like what you're talking about. We've got above them. Winds in our face. You can see the tracks going down through there. Okay, well, let's just keep on easing up here. Okay. Well, the moment of the truth was there, Dak said, hey, you got to get up front here. Stay close to me. And he finally got me in the right position. He said, hey, pick you a place out where you can steady your shot and get ready. Come on down there. OK, I want you to, I want you to go ahead. Those bulls are going to be sitting right up there. Just sneak up to that rock. Wait till he gives you a good shot. Dad, so what about that second bull over? No, he's, he's smaller. Okay. It's that one, one standing furthest out. Okay, he's still walking away from Yeah, wait till he gives you a good shot. He's getting in over here. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my shot. He's coming around. Got to this rock and got set up. And then all of a sudden, the bull wasn't really cooperating. He wouldn't turn and give me that desirable shot. All I could see was a back end, but I could see his rack. He was a beautiful six by six bull. I liked what I was looking at. I knew that Dax had me on the right bull in the right location. All I had to do now was make the shot. With a mature bull in his sights, will Hammond finally have his shot at Wyoming wall hanger or walk away once again disappointed? We'll find out when Realtree's NASCAR Outdoors continues. Hey, I'm Paul Menard, and you're watching Real Trees NASCAR Outdoors on Outdoor Channel, America's leader in outdoor TV. Real Trees NASCAR Outdoors is brought to you by the 2012 Chevy Silverado, the most dependable, long-lasting, full-size pickups on the road. By Russell Outdoors, explore your limits. By Primos, speak the language. By Thompson Center's New Dimension Bolt Action Platform. By New Holland, the official tractor of Team Real Tree. By Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by Bill Jordan's Real Tree, family, friends, and the outdoors. Trying to make the most of his second trip to Wyoming, Jeff and his guide Dax have stalked within shooting range of a mature bull. Will he provide the broadside shot they're looking for? 
Well, the moment the truth was there, Dak said, hey, you got to get up front here. Stay close to me. And he finally got me in the right position. We, we think he's a good shot. Uh, I could see the bull feeding down in a little, little, almost like a little ravine, maybe about 85 to 100 yards out in front of me. So I got to this rock and got set up. I knew that Dax had me on the right bull in the right location. All I had to do now was make the shot. Well, the bull finally gave me what I was looking for. He finally turned and I could get a shot on his, on his uh, right front shoulder. And I was trying real hard to try to slide that slug right in there because my rifle sighted at, at almost 300 yards. I was trying to make sure not to make too much of an adjustment for it and miss the bull. Fortunately, I didn't, but when I hit him, he didn't go straight down. That really concerned me. He started to move off to the right, and all of a sudden I found myself on the move trying to get a second shot on him. I was able to make the shot and get my elk, you know, put down like we wanted to. But unfortunately, you know, we were losing daylight. We knew that we weren't going to get this uh, elk quartered and taken out before it was going to be pitch black. So we made a decision to go ahead and, and get the animal where he was good enough to stay overnight because Dak said, hey, we'll bring horses back in the morning and we'll pack this animal out. And I said, horses? We get to go up there and pack this, this elk out? To me, that was music to my ears. The bill like, finished my hunt doing more something I enjoy just as much as I do hunting, that's horseback riding, to go in and pack my animal out just like I used to do back in the beginning of this country. When you think about Wyoming and, the, and the, basically the rugged cowboys and the outdoorsmen and mountain men that lived in this country, this is exactly what they did. And I had an opportunity to experience this. And buddy, I'm telling you, I couldn't wait for the morning to come. And we went back up there and had an opportunity to do exactly that. I learned so much, had so much fun, and so much of an appreciation of how great this country was at one time and still is today. Dax McCarty, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, brother. Good job, buddy. Hey, man. Good stalk. Good, Good job plan. coming up Good that plan. Whoo. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at, the, look at the mass of this thing. This is what I was talking about, these wagon hand bulls. Look at that mass right through there. Yes, sir. Good teamwork. We started it back, uh, back in bow season. Didn't get it closed out then, but today we closed the deal. Yep. There's, there's nothing I love more than elk hunting. Yeah. And uh, you guys have just been outstanding. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. We are in this bull. We made it happen. Made it happen. I know we would. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. you.